Hello and welcome to Hackerang TV. This is your host Adil Bandukwala. If you ever conversed with a sports enthusiast in India, chances are that Dream Eleven, the wildly popular fantasy sports app, has cropped up at some point in time during the conversation, hosting all of the country's favorite sports: cricket, football, kabaddi, basketball, hockey, volleyball, handball, and baseball, all on one app. Dream Sports has got the fantasy sports market in their clutches. Every day, millions of users log on to the app, build their favorite sports teams, and battle it out with their friends and family. If you listen closely, you can also hear incredible stories of people winning big money on the app. So, Dream as Dream Eleven or Dream Sports sits at the glistening intersection of sports, gaming, and technology, and they do it well. So we've invited their CTO Amit Sharma to talk about the engineering culture at Dream Eleven, their homegrown solutions, and the next big thing for the company's most beloved fantasy sports app. Amit has been with Dream Sports since 2016, building India's big, largest sports technology infra. Prior to joining Dream Sports, Amit worked for over a decade on some of the most complex large-scale distributed systems with large consumer companies like Yahoo and Netflix in California. Amit has completed his master's in computer science at the University of Massachusetts. While working in the US, Amit also completed his MBA from Levy School of Business. Apart from being a passionate Manchester United fan and a fitness enthusiast, Amit is also an avid traveler. Amit, welcome to Hackerang TV. Thank you. Happy to be here. Awesome. We've seen that people have just started tuning in. So I want to welcome a few of them. And I know I have to introduce Hari as well. I'll get to introducing Hari in a bit. A lot of them already know Hari because we do this on a very regular basis. So I'll come to Hari in a bit. But I see that Dhananjay has joined in on LinkedIn. Hey, Dhananjay, glad to see you joined. Thank you for tuning in. I see Chandan's come in as well. Chandan, hi. Good to see you. We've seen... Tejas has uh, joined in. We've got Pratik. We've got Bridge Kishore. Glad to see all of you. Very, very happy uh, uh, and grateful for you, for you all to tuning in. We're very excited about this. And we're very excited about this particular conversation today. So what I'd like to know is, before I jump into questions, from all of you who are tuning in, which is your favorite sport? Which is your favorite sporting team? And if you are a technology enthusiast, what do you love to code in? If you can answer these three things as comments, I'd love to feature that on screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to ask that same question to Amit. So Amit, which is your favorite sports team? Um, what do you enjoy coding in? And obviously you're from Bombay, so you can skip that one out. But while Amit is answering these, everyone, please give us three things. Where are you tuning in from? Which is your favorite sports team or which is your favorite sport? And uh, what language do you really enjoy coding in? Amit, let's go with you. Well, as you said in my uh, introduction, I'm a diehard Manchester United fan. And know the current slump in form or whatever you call it or is not going to change that ever. It's over it forever. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, as far as co enjoying coding is concerned, unfortunately, you know, at this stage, considering uh, the team that I have, and I, I don't, I haven't coded in like a while, you know, years or more maybe. But it's a funny thing. When I started my career, I was like, okay, I started my first job. I started doing C and I was like, let's build some expertise into it. And suddenly I was like, I switched jobs and everything was in Java. Then I spent time in Java and then I moved to Netflix and then there was like Python. And then very soon I realized it doesn't matter. Right. I mean, it's like I started enjoying all of it. I did a little bit of Scala as well back in the day. But I think the one thing that I tell my team also is that programming is just a means to an end. Everyone has their uh, few favorites. But uh, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed everything. All right. Thank you for sharing that, Amit. And there is a comment that you'll particularly be pleased to see. So Harish is saying we love Dream 11. Harish, you're not alone. I'm a huge Dream 11 enthusiast as well. I am on the app and I can't wait for IPL to kickstart, which is going to happen anytime soon in March. And I'm super excited even about the auctions. 
uh, at the IPL that are going to happen in February. This time it's going to be a crazy good auction. So for all of you, welcome. Type in where you're from. And Manish actually wants me to say his name. Manish, you've got a fascinating photo, man. And there you go. Manish, we've said your name. We've called you out. So all of you, uh, put in where you're tuning in from. What uh, is your favorite part of the tech stack or which is your favorite uh, sports team? And we'll keep this conversation going. In the meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and introduce... My co-host, like always, is Hari Shankaran Karunanidhi, co-founder and CTO of HackerRank, the technology hiring platform that is the standard for assessing developer skills for over 26 plus, uh, 26 plus 100 companies across the world. HackerRank is backed by GMI Equity, Kosla Ventures and Battery Ventures. Prior to HackerRank, Hari has had technology stints with IBM and Novell in Bangalore. Hari, thank you for joining us, like always. And I don't know this, but I would love to know what is your favorite sport and what is your favorite uh, sports team? And of course, what is your platform of choice when it comes to tech or code? I think, yeah, uh, happy to be here and re really, really excited. I have a ton of questions for Amit to see how they do things in Dream11. Um, <clears throat> the questions you answered, I think favorite sport is cricket and the favorite team is uh, CSK. Uh, I'm from Chennai, big Dhoni fan, so for sure. Uh, it has to be CSK till Dhoni is there. Uh, and then the favorite programming language, I really don't have, like Amit mentioned, there is uh, there's no one answer, but um, there is the first language I ever coded in. This was when I was building web applications in college was PHP. So still there is, there is always that uh, special place for your first language you learned. Uh, then always there is more uh, in a special love for Python as a programming language. It's super neat, nice to read and, it's it's uh, it's an amazing, fantastic language. After coding in PHP, when I read Python, I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" But given HackerRank's tech stack is in Ruby on Rails, and and I don't code for production, but whenever I have to write some simple scripts and other things which makes changes in systems, it's mostly Ruby these days. So it's it's a mix of all three. Uh, I'm coding more in uh, Ruby. Uh, I want to code in Python and have a special place for PHP, but I don't want to code in PHP. So that's that's probably my my answer, complicated answer for this. No, I think that's a good answer. It gives us a lot of perspective, Hari. And thank you for sharing that and giving us a little of that background. I think without further ado, we should get started. But I also want to call out a few people who've been commenting, right? So we've got people obviously from Bangalore, Bombay, Delhi, like always. But then we also have somebody from Sirsa. Uh, and then we've got someone... Uh, who really enjoys football, uh, Liverpool, coding in Java. We've got someone, obviously, a lot of us really enjoy cricket and Python. Uh, not uh, surprised. You've got Shweta, who enjoys volleyball, Java, and JavaScript. Uh, we've got uh, someone, Shreyas, who's from Bangalore. He says cricket, India, Java. All of us love India as a country. Uh, Shreyas, not surprising. Uh, it's just a little disheartening our loss to South Africa. But then let's hope we will bounce back and we'll bounce back how. So we're all focused on that. And then we've got someone from Indonesia as well. Uh, we've got someone from the US as well. And I wonder for that person who's joined in from US, you're probably in the East Coast. This is way too early for you to get up. Uh, so keep your uh, comments coming in. Good to see a comment from HS Kumar who says, e sala Cup Namde. This is the RCB slogan in the IPL, which says, we shall overcome this year. And let's pray and hope that RCB does uh, overcome this year and capture the trophy. So with that, let's get started. Amit, first question for you. Uh, Dream11 offers a freemium model of fantasy sports where users have a choice to participate for free or pay to participate in contests. Can you tell us a little about why this model was chosen? How has it gone about so far? And how successful has it been so far? Uh, I think Dream11, over the last three, four years, maybe a lot of people now have, uh, you know, now know about Dream11, but uh, what's an interesting thing is like Harsh and Bhavit, who are the founders of Dream11, they actually started Dream11 in 2008. And for around four years, they were trying to figure out, you know, what to offer to users that they would love. And they started with like a season long format where you had one team for the entire tournament and it kept getting points and the revenue model was ad supported. So they experimented with that a little bit. And then around in 2012, they kind of realized and they experimented with a single day fantasy format. You know, very good at multiple matches that you could play, but everything finished in a single day. And they started realizing that users actually like this format a lot more. 
and that's when they discovered the single match fantasy where you know everything happens in a single match you create a team matches over your rounds done and um, it it was just it just clicked in 2012 and since then since 2013 it's all it's been all about scaling the product going to more and more users adding more features around it and yeah we are freemium so you can like join any contest for free if you want or you can like go to paid contest and compete with other people so yeah that's how it happened thank you and thank you for sharing that context uh, as we see we have 120 million users now like by from like a few thousands to 120 million users in 2022 so yeah that's fantastic that that is insane and you know just i as we were pre chatting before you know uh, starting this conversation and going live i think hari had a very interesting question for you i think hari you should definitely ask that question to amit right away i think the people who've tuned in will also have a lot of fun listening to this particular question so why don't you go for it and while you do that uh, all of you who've tuned in thank you for tuning in on linkedin youtube facebook twitter wherever you are um, uh, or even twitch for that matter uh, if you have a question for hari or amit drop that in as a comment and we'll go ahead and ask that question to hari or amit meanwhile hari to you please go ahead and ask uh, the question you had in mind for amit Yeah. So first off, the you know the amount of traffic you see in Dream Eleven is is so high, and and especially I think during an IPL match, I'm expecting the amount of you know, requests per second, transactions per second, all of that being you know beyond the usual limits. So I want to know how Dream Eleven engineers enjoy IPL. Like if if it's the IPL finals last over. and let's say you know you have it, it is all the matches at the end have this close um finish and at that time are they worrying should this player hit a four or is my redis at 80% i should worry about it like how do they uh, what, where is their mind at and how do you ease that pain in and like what are the things you have done in the infrastructure side so that your team can enjoy ipl as well along with all of us and and you know played dream eleven during the match so believe me ipl time pre ipl time is the best time of the year for us so we mm-hmm. enjoy not the ipl but uh, but the quarter before it and then the answer to your question is the the better we do our job before the ipl starts which is january february march actually around the year but you know but especially in that quarter the more at ease we are so the expectations is and we've actually mastered this art over like by making a lot of mistakes by putting in a lot of time over the years where to serve a product at the scale and you know we love to talk about our scale because it's a lot of hard work so i would like love to boast we supported more than 5 million users concurrently on our platform and we are very confident that our platform can easily scale up to 10 million concurrent users as well that that is us like 100 plus million rpm on our uh, edge layers right so yeah so we do a lot of work uh before uh, across the services making sure the distributed architecture works flawlessly we do a lot of performance tests we do capacity planning we do projections of traffic exactly what to expect each and every year and the idea is like around a week before we have to be set up scaled up and ready right then each game after that is just like sitting back and enjoying the concurrency numbers go up and down during a game now that's the most ideal version but yeah what keeps like i mean if that always happens then life would get boring right so once in a while we do have issues here and there it could be because of aws failures it could be something that we miss it could be some systems behaving but uh, we can probably say that our uh, uptimes has been very very high more than 99.9% across the last few ipls so i think we've done a pretty good job and when an interesting moment in a match happens and users flock to our system that's the best part for us right so we have a huge screen we all sit together there is a match on one screen and there is number of users on our platform on one screen and as the people are playing and the match gets interesting and we see that millions and millions of users like and our graphs of concurrent users rising so it's pretty exciting it's an adrenaline rush for us and all the work that we do across the year to get ready for ipl and give our users a fantastic experience it it just all feels worth it all right and it looks like pratik is, is... Uh, you know bang on the next question i had is uh, could you talk a little bit more about the tech stack that is used to handle this traffic and also uh, maybe a little bit more on the pre prep because that seems to be the majority of the work right the quarter before the ipl starts 
like how do you do your load testing you spoke about capacity planning how do you project that and and what happens during the match if the projection crosses and then you see more traffic what are the things you have in place and and what is your tech stack look like at dream level sure absolutely so thanks for the for the question um so our the, the you know, I, I emphasize a lot on the quarter before the IPL, but uh, building a system for scale that supports this kind of traffic is cannot be done in three months, right? So we, uh, like a few years ago, we realized that we need to develop deep expertise in distributed systems and create a completely, like, you know, we start, when we started moving from a monolithic to a microservices architecture, and that's when we realized that if we are able to serve so many million users concurrently, it's going to be like a harmony of a lot of systems each optimized to the core in the function that they actually do and work together. So right from like when you start the app, how you the screen the home screen that loads, that's powered by like a, a service that we call as fantasy tour service. That is concept of all the matches or you know that's gonna come up. Then we have a contest service that lists all the contests. Then there's a contest join service. Once the, all that happens, then we have a leaderboard service. Then behind the scenes we have augmented service like authentication, etc. That help complete the flow. So each of these services are worked individually designed, right? Choosing the right stack for them. We do a little bit of standardization when it comes to our programming languages and frameworks. So we try to have, I think more than 90% of our services are written on uh, Vertex at this uh, at this point, because I think standardization in the lean team, you know, we're just 350 engineers. You should remember that, right? So standardization actually helps a lot. And uh, so all our services on that stack, behind the scenes, some services use Cassandra, some use uh, Ignite, some use uh, MySQL and Aurora, some use uh, Aerospike, Elastic Cache is, a, is the caching there for it. It's like a, a lot of different components for each and every is picking the right components, putting it all together, and then putting everything under the scanner. So in parallel, the the you know the other teams doing their stuff. For example, the the uh, data science team is able to accurately predict using ML models what kind of traffic to expect. The Automation and SDE team is able to identify and study the pattern of traffic that we get at various traffics and map exactly the performance set that they need to test. And then we have the DevOps team that has created an immense, um, you know, uh, system where we can like we have environments for performance testing that replicate as close to possible the production environment, and we simulate the traffic on the systems. We scale everything up, and then we keep doing that, and we keep like. Uh, hit, trying to break each and every service, find the bottlenecks, optimize them, till the time they're completely convinced, yes, that this system will scale for certain X number of traffic. And this is like an iterative process, it never ends, right? And even then, we are like, we certify a certain flow, okay, a user can come in, join a match, join a contest, play and get a great experience. It doesn't end there. Like tomorrow, when we, every single feature that we add, we have to serve that feature for, again, same scale. So that each feature also goes through a performance testing cycle. So it's like a DNA for us now, and this happens around the year. It cannot happen in a quarter. What happens in a quarter is like the finishing touches. You know, we all work together, adding a lot of features so that when we get a surge of users during IPL, we actually have those things ready for them. And that's when we optimize, we scale, we make sure we double check everything is ready, we update versions. We just have to be watertight, alerting, monitoring. This is the finishing touches in that quarter. But the work goes twenty four seven around the year, and that's what makes it exciting. That's uh, that's fantastic. And and uh, actually, one sub question on this, and and you mentioned about how <coughs> performance is is the DNA for the engineering team. Like, you know, you build a new feature, you still have you always have to check whether it scales for millions and millions of users. So, if if I'm a new engineer joining your team, what are the different aspects? Looks like performance is a core thing. My onboarding, what are the different things I have, I'll be learning or what are the things which will be taught as core to me other than performance? Are there any other pillars you you can think of which is going to be like as a Dream 11 engineer on day one, uh, when they start committing code, performance is something they will be worrying about. And is there any other dimensions you could, you could add to this? I think uh, the main, so I was talking about how to serve scale, right? So when it comes to serving scale, majority of the work actually happens in backend uh, distributed systems. Mm -hmm. But it also depends on what team you join. But trust me, in each and every team, we have a fantastic onboarding process. And so if you join the front end team right now, you would be a part of a massive 100 member team that is rewriting our entire app 
from native to react so we are supposed to go live and i think as if i'm correct and the last estimates that i got was maybe within the next couple of weeks we supposed to go live we identified the potential of having a single stack across our front end and you know especially in this crunch market where hiring is a challenge you know doubling our workforce overnight so for the last few months we all were very very hard and it's a very ambitious project you know company of our scale our size massive code base rewriting taking such a huge risk i think but, but that's our culture so i think you would be part of that you know have working on top of fantastic architecture and like developing things if you join my data teams again it could be data engineering where you'll be the you know uh, learning like uh, big data architectures are a complete data platform is in house built on aws cloud right but that that system alone serves like collects 15 terabytes of data 15 to 20 terabytes of data every day and serves 100 million uh, rpm like collecting those events so big data architectures to support that and data warehousing if you join the uh, uh, ml team right the we have life scientists and mlees who are working very hard to develop state of the art algorithms to power various features on our app so there your journey is going to be different so i mean it depends i mean a lot, every single team that we have specializes in what they do and everything just comes together harmoniously and works so yeah i think we've got fantastic Uh, roles across the board. So whatever interests you, whether it's automation, whether it's infrastructure engineering under DevOps, whether it's cloud security, we've got it, man. And we we have everything. Just just reach out, and we can find something for you. Awesome. So that's you that's go. the page. Hari, yeah. Adil. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to interrupt and say Amit is hiring for a bunch of different roles, and a lot of people were asking like, how do we apply in the comments? So I wanted to flag that particular. Uh, link right there so if you go to dreamsports.group/careers you'll see the boatload of positions that up with this uh, attempting to hire at this point in time for his org so please go ahead and apply for all of you who are curious for career opportunities all of them are listed there so please go ahead and apply back to you ari yes yeah, thanks for that answer amit yeah there are 50 members strong team today but we're actually looking to hire 250 more in the next one to two years so we're looking for really really passionate talented sports fans who want to create a uh, good technology together so please yeah reach out to us and we would love to have a conversation with you yes folks that's that's from amit so he mentioned about front end back end cloud security ml and he said there's everything maybe he just mentioned a few so that's the link where you can go ahead and apply for dream 11 um and i'm at good luck with the rewrite i know the front end rewrite is always tricky and and uh, i know good luck on the launch of there you did mention a little bit about your in house data platform uh, when you're talking about the different roles uh, uh you know you, 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 even in your engineering blog you've written about this data aware your your own data analytics dashboard and fens which is for you know a system for ensuring fair and transparent games i like fen you, you, it's interestingly used a graph db there uh, you don't see that a lot uh, while building uh, you, know, you know systems uh, at scale so what are, what are your you know how did it come about in the first place like why did you go up thinking like we need to do uh, in house solution maybe the uh, uh, any outsource or ready made solution it didn't fit your scale could you talk about like how did you go about this and and what are pros and cons in building something at this scale uh, in house sure absolutely you know i have a very very lean team and i always tell my was right you know that i have less people that i need and he's like isn't that true for everyone including google so the jokes apart we have like 300 member team and we support like 150 microservices and very very complex stack and algorithms so we are always short of people so obviously every time we invest time in building something there is an opportunity cost so you know the way i look at it is uh, every company every startup goes through a journey and when you start you have a very lean team you don't have the in house expertise so what you do is you just Uh, pick up anything that's off the shelf that you can afford and go live with it keep iterating on your product and start scaling and then eventually that comes a point when you hit a certain scale then you start feeling uh, that something is missing right and there could be multiple reasons why and then you say maybe it's time for us to start looking at you know taking some of these components in house so when it comes to i was talking about data platform for example right so we at, there was a point where our Uh, in that uh, stack, we were supported by segment and amplitude. Then we moved to GA, right, for a while. And then the challenge with GA was like, as we started scaling up and we started getting like such high concurrency, again we started hitting some bottlenecks. Certain specific features that we wanted, the way we wanted to at our scale, it wasn't happening. 
then we also were working with certain third party uh, vendors or partners for some other uh, applications but our scale is one of the highest in the country right maybe like the top or maybe you know top, top three maybe so they couldn't support our scale or the cost for them to actually support us was too much so we started hitting like these kind of bottlenecks and then we said this is not going to work and then if we kept waiting for us to like hit a wall that wasn't like acceptable to us so that's when we started uh, investing time and building expertise and started building we took our entire data platform in house once you take that you know just the ingestion and the acquisition and data like in today's world with the sql interface is not enough there are a lot of tooling that comes into the picture because data is consumed by almost each and every person in the company uh, not just engineers right so you need to have the right um, uh, frameworks for them to actually play so that's where like data where right so we are missing heavily it's still not mature but we're still working on creating the funneling system to be able to like plot user journeys and understand and get insights into it for example um and then now um, so but if i have to summarize right there like six to seven criteria and we debate it to death within the company as to why should we build something versus buy and why not right so some of the reasons are like is it core to you and as a company anything that is core to you you don't want to outsource yeah you want to own the ip you want to keep it close to the chest so you just own it right or is the third party solution too expensive right and when you talk about expensive it could be you shouldn't just look at the dollar value right that cost is there but the cost of hosting it in house creating it in house opportunity cost of those people who are creating it also needs to be considered so cost can play a huge part sometimes uh, if you use a third party solution they serve hundreds and hundreds of customers so they have a feature set that's common but anything specific that you may need may not be on the list you know some of the requirements especially if you scale will be very unique to you so when you want to build those features again good luck telling them to like prioritize something just for you unless you like very very big and then have like 25% of their revenue support right sometimes a lot of these customers we work when we like manage services or partners that you know when things are working great but suddenly when you're trying to reach out to them for support something goes wrong the level of control that you have on things in house versus being reliant on third party for support and if the support is not up to the mark then you cannot uh, just keep relying on them and scale sometimes as you scale your uh, the solutions that you use out there they are actually not meant because there are very few companies of our scale out there they are not built for our scale so we have to optimize just like how we have optimize our product for e for serving such high concurrency everything that we actually design also has to serve the same scale then scale becomes another important aspect when you are actually trying to do that then security like security data privacy do you want your data to flow out i mean you can rely on third party but looking at the world that we are living in and keeping data secure close to you, as close to you as you can you know we cannot compromise on our user data at all that's number one priority security first principle is the principle in which we operate so making sure that our data is very very secure a very strategic call there to actually keep everything in house that keep you know, but what one very important thing is you can build things in house but you need to have the expertise you cannot build things which you don't have the expertise on right fortunately we are experts in distributed systems and high scale systems so we are now able to build anything but you, before you take something in house and start building make sure that you are ready for it otherwise you we end up so you know so these are so many considerations that you have to evaluate at every point what matters to you more at which stage and make a call and we go through this analysis for everything that we do we still have things that are outsourced completely we still have some managed service providers that work very well with us and we are very happy and something we have like a lot of things that we built have you know so it's a balance and you have to make a call a data driven call that's yes that's a, that's a complete answer like you know it covers all the dimensions and all the lenses you have to look, look through uh, before you take the call and even counted on cost and and when you're saying very clear on it's not just the dollar cost right like there is the the developer cost and there is the opportunity cost and so on uh, that's uh, that's a fantastic answer i do um, you know want to as you as you built this i do want to you know, share your experience i i read about data ware and fans and and the blogs are super exciting and the current stage is super exciting for any engineer to go and learn but how does a v1 v2 of this look like like you know right now it scales to millions and millions of user from day one has is it built this powerful or is there an iterative way you have about saying you know the first version is going to scale for few million and then we can think about you know multiple millions like uh, what's the right way is it like build right first and you know that has to be rock solid 
or is it move fast break things like you know what's approach you have taken for your, your you know when building these core systems it depends on the stage at which you are at so like for the last 3 years we've been at around 5 million confident users that we spent last 3 ipos have been that scale right so at any point of time if we want to take anything live we have to support that scale in anything that we do maybe like before that when we were building things yes but you're right wherever we can ship we ship the fastest possible way but we mm-hmm. ship fast by reducing the feature set instead of mm-hmm. compromising the architecture you know scale is all about architecture so you can write at the beginning whether you want to roll it out of for a few hundred or 100000 or thousands users you can define you can design your system in a way that you know it's going to be scalable in the future and the more systems you design of this type it becomes second nature to you so now we are at a stage where everything that we do we actually design a system that's very scalable if you want to ship it faster then we turn on the feature set and we take it live and when we take it live of course we can control the amount of users that we are actually showing this feature to so that's where we actually control and maybe you know initially the system may not be exposed to that kind of traffic and as we slowly scale up we'll identify bottlenecks or issues and we keep iterating over them and keep shaping till we actually get to a mature system that can handle all the scale now i'll i'll talk about uh, our in house experimentation platform so see, we're a very data driven company uh, our core values are do put where d basically it's like stands for data obsession right and the others are ownership high performance user first and transparency but we are data obsessed so you know everything that we do is highly data driven so we are now developing a culture of experimentation now how do we make decisions so we have uh, we ex- uh, we encourage every single person like from product design take everyone to run experiments on our uh, systems we have so many users it's fantastic for us and but to run experimentation at scale where you can have thousands and thousands of experiments running on billions of users it's not an easy easy task and there are very few again an example there are very few tools out there today that could support the feature set that we need target the users the way we want at our scale so then we for the last two years we have been working on our in house experimentation platform and just being the perfect sports company that we are we call it drs right decision review system so we have we call it drs and we you know and we built it uh, and it it just works and right from like uh, starting from experimentation design and figuring out how to do that the choice of the experiment back end front end choosing the right variants or the combination of variants is a single variant multi variant you know how do you actually set this up and then identify the cohort of users their inclusion and exclusion criteria to the t identifying or creating the ability to create cohorts at run time based on user traits you know when they come in go sort of like constantly running sql queries and assigning users making sure there's no overlap based on the kind of things that you are uh, trying to do and then assigning all those users in that and what what about assignment strategies right i mean do you want to do like cluster sampling stratified sampling random allocation so every single day we get new and new requirements from our analytics team about how they actually want to run these experiments how do you isolate all these users so that if there is no corruption and then once all that is done again your experiment could be completely wrong so you have to control the exposure and the experiment itself you know and then the ability to like slowly trickle that experiment to users getting that confidence that everything seems fine data is flowing in yeah and then actually exposing it so it's a very complex system that has to work at scale which you, which is live which is working very well in fact now we we've, we've realized after we finished this entire uh, product in our product that oh you know what we are doing great experiments we getting great results but what about the analysis of the results because you get tons and tons of data but you know you torture data and it will say anything that you want it to say so how do you now we are in the phase of figuring out building an analysis framework that would let us look at all the data that we actually collect and make sure the analysis is done in a very structured way looking at benchmarks and making sure that we getting insights which are actually real and not what we want them to say right for example so it's a perfect example of how this system has to be right up and running with scale but if it starts out a feature that is on where that is only going to be built for our power users for example maybe we can build a system that doesn't need to scale that and have, if we actually open that feature to power users in the future then yes then we we'll maybe rearchitect and then take more time because obviously creating systems for a larger scale takes a little more thought process and time i hope that answers your question
Yes, yes, absolutely. I do have more questions, but Adil, I think you want to conduct something in between. So uh, uh, you can take it ahead and then I'll come back to this question again. Yeah, so Amit, we run this very interesting uh, section in between, which is like, we'll play a quick video to understand what are people thinking uh, to get their inputs. So I'm going to play a quick 30 second video. So all of you who've tuned in, there is going to be a question that's going to be asked to all of you. Uh, process that question and then reply with your answers in the form of comments so that we know like what your input is. We'll ask that question, of course, to Amit and Hari as well. We'll get their inputs. We're very keen to know what your inputs are. Right. So I'm going to quickly play that 30 second video where you'll get to know what the question is and you'll see the answers. Pick one answer as a comment. We'll be back in 30 seconds. So uh, the question was, which technology use case do you think will gain massive traction in 2022? You can please go ahead and put in your answers. And I'd love to ask the question to same Amit uh, as well. And Amit, your answer need not be in the three that we had mentioned. It could be anything under the sun. We'd like to get to know your view. So according to you, according to you, what do you think will gain massive traction from a fan engagement or from a uh, tech sports uh, point of view this year? We'd love to hear your opinion. Yeah, I mean, I can answer that in a biased manner. I would say fan engagement, sports fan engagement, because that's an area that we are highly um, interested in and actually working on and trying to see. I think just uh, just like taking a minute, right? So Dream11 is a flagship brand, fantasy sports platform, 120 million users. But I also want to throw it out there that under the Dream Sports umbrella, we do not want to limit uh, us only to fantasy sports. So what we're trying to now do is actually create a lot of other portfolio of products that actually interlink together to give a seamless sports experience. So we've got Fancode, our flagship product, which has 25 million installs as well. And it, it's masters in content, community, commerce. Right? It has like live stream, a lot, a lot of games, live sports. And then we have Dreamside Go, which is plans like sports travel experiences for you. And then we have Kilomore, where you can go and book your turf. So, you know, we are slowly, slowly getting into various areas across sports. So yes, fan engagement and making things. And as we expand using uh, 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 our MNA strategy, we're actually looking at the areas of fan engagement very, very uh, closely. Uh, but in a generic manner, if you ask me, I think I think the entire Web3 space, and it uh, doesn't have to be crypto. I don't know what's going to happen with cryptocurrencies. But in general, the entire Web3 space, um, blockchain technology, the possibilities of things that can be built on it in each, each and every area, and um, you know, especially we are very actually very closely looking to invest in this technology now, and we're actually looking for people who are blockchain enthusiasts or have been like dabbling at it, like now, like you know, come like reach out to us, and we want to build some great things together on that technology in the sports ecosystem, and and maybe in the next few months, or we would really love to launch certain things on that underlying technology. I think that is one space we should keep a close eye on, and the entire NFT space, the fan tokens, the way things are happening. It's very, very interesting. So let's see. Amit, I think there is an entire conversation that warrants just Web3, whether it is blockchain, crypto, uh, whether it is DAO, whether it is NFT, whether any and many of these things. I think there's so much that we can talk about and there's so much to be built. And glad to know that you're hiring. So curious. So if any of you are building stuff on smart contracts, Solidity, Solana, Luna. Go ahead, ping Amit. He's looking for you. And I'm sure, uh, you know, Amit will be very excited to build cool stuff. Hari and me are also working on a very, very exciting Web3 project. So if any of you are interested in building anything on the Web3 framework, please do ping us. We are happy to directly try and see if we can have a conversation with you. And yeah. uh, thank you for your answer, Amit. I see you, Sorry, Harsh. Actually, 
asked me to set up like a, a dream team we call uh, the pod structure that we have we call them dream teams so my my job is to get a dream team up and ready by march you know with, with people who are like interested in blockchain have some experience and we are exploring some very very exciting products so yeah it's the right time to reach out to me awesome there you go you know where he is he is on twitter he is on linkedin i'll quickly tell you what his uh, id is on link, uh, twitter as well so you can ping him there uh coming up in just a minute uh he is amit sharma ak i'll put that up on screen as well so that you all can take a look so that is uh, amit on twitter so feel free to ping him and then hame bhi ping kar lena yaar hacker rank ko okay so few of us at hacker rank are also building cool stuff so give us give us uh, a ping or two as well we'd love to chat with you as well all right on that uh, love to see all the comments that have been coming in on fang engagement and amit also picked fang engagement in ai uh hari what would you predict uh, would go, get massive traction this year in the tech sports arena all right if actually if i have to build a leaderboard of how uh, exciting or audacious that those projects are i'd say it, it would be like 1 3 and 2 like if you are able to hit 2 that would be amazing like ai for user engagement there's a lot you could do with metaverse and other things which is coming in so uh, looks like I, i do believe like one we are almost there um if i have to have a realistic check maybe it's just the third one like we'll have blockchains and nfts to do things but if we are super audacious and if you are able to build a lot more i think uh, you know having clear user engagement using ai and using new technologies there uh, that would be a, a great milestone to achieve within 2022 if not in 2022 we are for sure going to achieve it in the future like post that it's the question is whether it's 2022 or not is is the question it's it's not whether it's going to happen or not yeah there's a question from shivam which says any moves into the metaverse uh, you know he already answered it amit already said he is looking to build out this platform so there you go go ahead and ping him i don't think it's a question of any moves i think the question is when are they going to step into the metaverse i don't think it's uh, if if but it's actually when and i think all of us will obviously step into it sometime soon but with that back to you hari Yes, uh, and my last question on the homegrown solutions. I'm I'm still excited about the things you've built there, and that's why I'm I'm sticking to this topic uh, for all this while. How does this? How does the idea of a homegrown solution come up? Like when you want to build a data, is it like you as a CTO saying, "Let's go ahead"? Is it top down, bottom up? Is it a set of engineers they having an RFC and coming to you saying, "We should go ahead and do this"? Like how and uh, how do you encourage people doing this? As you spoke about the dream team. is it the dream team task to come up with these how, how does it work internally and how can companies build this you know culture where the teams could build their uh, homegrown solutions to handle their core problems like if it's the core business problem uh, uh, did, does it is it your directive is it someone you know, know the engineers telling you what to do better how does it go in dream level absolutely So I think uh, to answer that, I'll talk a little bit about culture. Right? So we have a very uh, open, transparent, bottom-up culture at Dream Lab. So I said, so our entire my entire team is divided into uh, pod structure. As I said, pods are nothing but dream teams for us. A set of dream teams together form a squad, and the squad is responsible for a certain area. There is a squad for gameplay. There is a squad for social. There is a squad for gamification, and even DRS, right? So there is a squad for the focus on DRS. There is a squad that is doing our communication platform. So across the board, we have the entire team divided into dream teams and different squads. Now these teams and squads on the ground are constantly thinking of innovative ideas to do. Right? It, some of those ideas could be feature development, new features that our users need. Some of these ideas could be making sure that our, uh, you know, tech debt. You know, at this point is the right time to handle a tech debt, for example, or refactor. or uh, at some point maybe you know some things are maybe not ready for scale go out there or maybe integration of platform components so there's so many things that a team needs to do and one of in one of these things is like the ability to observe what we have and foresee potential problems i talked about the criteria so that criteria is very well um, communicated to the entire team right is it core you know is it what is the cost that we trying to see the feature set is a problem and one of those things will actually come up and users understand and you know our team understands that you know that Oh, it's a security risk. Oh, our data shouldn't leave our systems. Oh, this is not scaling. I don't have faith that next IPL, this particular system that we are actually relying on, will scale. 
and what they do is they come up and we follow a process called as heal right so hypothesis uh, we form a hypothesis right and then we set up an experiment and then we do an analysis based on the uh, higher expected and actuals and then we look at learnings so the expectation from anyone who wants to do anything here is just set up a hypothesis of what you want to do and then all these hypotheses what they're trying to do is, is then put into a prioritization framework which is also uniform each squad decides their own prioritization framework some mandates are given just to make some keep some consistency and they just put it all together and if it makes sense then we just uh, you know almost very very few things here are done top down and I I would if I had the choice to actually you know make some things happen maybe once a year or twice a year I'll try to sneak something in, but trust me my own team takes a lot of convincing when I tell to them to do anything and uh, and they challenge me as well so that's the culture that we've built yeah but that's that's how we operate the teams decide based on the frameworks and we take a data driven decision ninety nine percent data one percent gut or maybe ninety five percent data and five percent or whatever you call it wow well, that's that's fantastic. um the heat framework is, is pretty good and a nice way to give them the freedom as well my last question to you is what are the new technical features that you're planning to introduce in 2022 like what are uh, what are the new things uh, one your team is working on what are the new features which we can users expect to have there uh, could you talk uh, give a quick glimpse about uh, what's going to happen in 2022 Yeah, yeah, happy to. I mean, I mean, as I said, this is the time of the year where we are like working on a lot of things. I feel is very near, so we'll maybe launch a few exciting things there. So I think the theme, the biggest theme of the year for us is personalization. So we dabbled with uh, personalization in the product. Uh, uh, like a couple of years ago, we started uh, targeting contest personalization. You know, so the on the contest screen for a particular match, we added a for you section, and we try to predict the three contests that you would like. and it's it sounds easy but at our scale again there's so many like thousands and thousands of contest joins per second millions of contests in a particular match a huge very very challenging problem so we we achieved like an 85% adoption rate so 85% of our transactions actually happen through that uh, section you know so contest personalization is where we actually started our personalization journey but this year one of the biggest things that we do is right from your home page to your contest your payments and end to end user flow and journey that you actually want to have we want to personalize it just for you so you know when you come to dream 11 as compared to any other fantasy app you would see the difference that it's tailor made for you right and uh, we will integrate things like social components within the system for you we your history the sports that you like maybe give you multi so it's so much in the works we're still figuring it out that's the biggest thing i think step by step this year you'll see us rolling out a lot of features on the personalization front i think it's a lot of interesting ml work happening on that on that side um and then um, as i said we are rewriting our entire app so i think from an end user's perspective they may or may not realize but from a, a, our perspective it's a brand new app that will go live to millions and millions of users this ipm maybe 20 30 million users working on react native uh, working at scale can we deliver the same performance as native that's the biggest question mark you know how fast can we move and deliver features now that we have a common code base for ios and android that's up, upcoming for us we are also introducing localization i think uh, hopefully if things go on track this ipl you'll also see localization in the app where we're trying to again build it in a way where it shouldn't be that difficult to add more and more languages in the future right so building it right with the current architecture it's a massive project across the company we're trying to work on localization and roll that out um uh, we dealt with a little bit of gamification by launching streaks you know one day five day 10 day streaks last ipl but that was just a tip of the iceberg so i think now we have a full fledged strategy around our loyalty and gamification we want to revamp the entire system so keep your eye out on uh, that that's going to come very very soon and uh, one very interesting thing is we've been actually working on social within our app for the last few years i think and then now we finally seeing some traction and users are our products are maturing to a point where they, they're enjoying the experience and uh, so it's like it's almost like working like in you know, a facebook within dream 11 right because you have to have groups you need a connected network you need to identify people you need to recommend them and uh, you know give them chat with each other but just providing a social experience wasn't is not enough right for people so we are doing a deep integration of our core gameplay within social the ability to actually join contests from your group the ability to see your leaderboard scores maybe at some point you know how do we make sure that gameplay is completely integrated into a social experience 
where you can like interact with friends and enjoy the game and play at the same time so just make the app a lot more engaging so a lot of interesting stuff happening on that front as well so yeah we've got exciting feature lined up and uh, we think a blockbuster 22 is gonna uh, be around the corner for us i think we're working on it that's uh, that's an amazing list uh, looking forward to seeing all of that in 2022 and looks like people are already sharing their uh, uh, feature ask as well um, uh, i think uh, chetan it goes usually to the product team uh, the features you want to go uh, um, and and like amit mentioned if he takes a feature to his engineering team uh, they are going to push back as well uh, but adil over to you uh, i know you even have some questions for you. you know when i saw that comment from chetan uh, i quickly remembered uh, you know these days shark tank india is getting crazy popular especially in the meme space right so when uh, a product manager goes to an engineer and says that hey this is a feature i want to build chetan let's say if you are going uh, and asking for this feature to be built the answer that is going to be uh, from the engineer is going to be ye meri expertise nahi hai i am out right so i think yeah. it's uh, these days a lot of these conversations are happening because there's just so much happening and everybody wants everything so there's this you know so many requests that come in it's a question of really prioritization so there are a lot more questions uh, and i'd love to ask uh, a couple before we wrap to amit so there's an interesting question here from omkar and he says does dream 11 have a part in moving to a path of star sports live streaming into bracket scale up fan code and also have a move to different sports streaming like football epl la liga the works so uh, is there uh, is are, are you all thinking on those lines we just love to get a comment or two if possible i mean it's, you know it's i don't know about being the next uh, star sports but we definitely as i said we have fan code which is the home for an, a lot of nice uh, content to actually live stream so we've got the 100 from the uh, england you know the ipl of england that they launched last year we've got bangladesh premier league and ecs we have so many tournaments that are live on fan code today we have some other sports right as well at some point we had bundes league so these rights come and go but we already have uh, multiple sports live streaming on fan code so i think there we just taking the uh, you know we we are not going after the big big games right i think it's available everywhere what we're trying to understand is like how can we get quality sports across the world which is not accessible to users in india right and give them an opportunity to actually just go to fan code and watch those so that's the connect that we're trying to create that's our strategy um yeah we're always trying to sign up new new rights it's going to keep happening we'll get something we'll start streaming then and it's a lot of strategic calls budgeting what are the rights available for when you know a lot of these rights get locked up for years there's a lot that goes into what uh content exactly we will get in stream but yeah the app is live and over a period of years we hope to get better and better at it Right, so and just on, that, sure. just on that note, we have very important thing: the West Indies, uh, the India tour of West Indies in this year, July, uh, the three T20s and the three One Day Internationals are going to be live and exclusive on Fan Code. So make sure that you tune in. Know, that's one time we are expecting millions of users to flock to Fan Code as well, which is our sister company, and we there's a deep integration between Dream Eleven and Fan Code. and we expect millions of users and maybe more concurrency on than on uh, than dream 11 on fan code this year so we are again i think there as well to create this fantastic product 50 million or more users expected to actually watch that tournament live and exclusive on fan code it won't it won't be anywhere else so this is the chance to actually build something uh, great so yeah very excited for it So Omkar there you have it it's not going to be a few years away it's in fact just a couple of months away get excited the IPL gets over in May and then you dive straight into that West Indies series so it's going to be exciting times uh, another couple of questions if we can go in there's a question from uh, the from Kartikeya which says before you go can you give us a brief overview of potential blockchain use cases uh there's another question from ashish as well which says okay what how are you reimagining blockchain so maybe take a minute or two amit what are potential web3 slash blockchain slash dao slash um all, all all this good stuff in the web3 world what are potential use cases we can reimagine absolutely i think i'll talk about the favorite one that we keep talking about in house so you know we uh, we have a very very strong fair play uh, policy we want to be a very transparent product especially cons was it involves money so what we do is as soon as a, a match deadline hits we give the users an ability to download a pdf file of all the teams created by everyone in the contest that they're participating 
just to give them that confidence that mm-hmm. there is no teams that are changed in any way you know into the system and they can even after the match they can just look at their local copy and connect the teams that work that's like a transparent feature that we built but what we realized over the years is as our contests are becoming bigger and bigger with like 8 million entries into our biggest contest they creating that pdf and like giving it to users in time it take around 10 to 15 minutes to generate it because it's a massive massive file right so smaller contests are like ready immediately but the bigger ones especially then this is not a great user experience for them having to like you know we want to give them a much better way to actually uh, transparently know that there is absolutely uh, no change happening in games after the match deadline and that's one of the applications that we're trying to fit fit in blockchain we're like what if we have the ability to actually you know in an anonymous manner keep showing the team history of everyone what they're build doing how they're actually changing in like time you can actually access that you know it's it's immutable it won't change right posted somewhere maybe i mean we're still exploring this idea and as soon as the match deadline hits it becomes available to you actually actually see the teams whose team it is you know initially we just hide certain details and then we expose those details so that can potentially be a very transparent robust system that gives users a much better user experience in solving the problems that they're trying to solve like and create transparency and trust into the system and i think as in as these cryptos and other things become more popular in india the masses the users understand what blockchain it is how secure it can be we really want to build something on it and this is one example but there are a lot more that we internally repaid i think we need a lot more time for that but this is one of the things that we're really looking very closely and we might actually do something in the next few months on it that's a crazy good insight amit so there you go kartikeya ashish i hope that gives you a quick preview on what are potential use cases in web3 slash blockchain that dream 11 is already kind of thinking about uh, in this domain so with that i think it's time for a wrap we're almost up on the clock amit this has been a brilliant session clearly people are calling out that they really enjoyed listening to you anubhav has given one such comment loves the way that you've described and articulated how you work and how you're thinking about doing amazing stuff at dream 11 so and dream sports so with that again hari thank you for being my co-host can't do this without you and you're always you know you always make time uh, for this so very very grateful to you hari and also amit thank you for making time uh thank you look welcome so much and it was great being here i think uh, the next decade in india with the engineering talent we have and the companies and the products that are coming out will be fantastic so i think i'm really looking forward to like working with a lot of them and if anyone's interested please reach out to us and we would love to work together yeah awesome. this this was fantastic you know in the hiring process we have this 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 one interview when we hire developers the system design round it felt like i interviewed amit or dream 11 as a mock interview saying what are the what are the ways in which in fact some of the questions which came up was the typical questions i would ask in a system design round it's it's amazing to learn from them on how they have managed and scaled distributed systems thanks amit yeah we're going to invest a lot of time this year to like write a lot more blogs maybe do some more talks and open source a lot of things there's a huge uh, open source move we want to make very very soon we're very excited about that we want to give back to the community all the amazing work that we've done So yeah, we want to share our learnings with everyone as much as we can, and yeah, looking forward to that as well. So keep uh, stay tuned. All right, with that, it's a wrap. Have a great evening, everyone, uh, and for now, we will see you soon.